Let's see who is stronger. What? This is insane. Wait, is, is, uh, wait, wait. Is Magnus winning a pawn? I'm again flabbergasted. This game is insane. Breaking news. Mittens the cat. The cat that is destroying the whole internet. Hikaru Nakamura, Gotham Chess, Eric Rosen and more. Is actually Magnus Carlsen. Yes, this is my theory. I think that since Chess.com acquired Play Magnus Group, they still didn't create a Magnus Carlsen bot. And this is just the first step. Today, I'm making a huge challenge. Mittens versus Magnus Carlsen. I'll be using the Play Magnus application where Magnus with age of 30 will face Mittens the cut. Is the game ending in a draw? Let's see. Okay, Magnus is playing the move d4. Magnus plays d4 against Mittens. I exist at this chessboard through all the times and realities. <laughs> meow! We will play this game against each other forever. Meow! <laughs> so Magnus is playing c4. And there we go with the knight out. So they are playing a very solid line. This is like starting a Catalan, no? Magnus plays g3. So Magnus really loves the Catalan. And bishop to a6. I see Mittens is attacking this pawn. And now there is a way to protect. And Magnus is playing the move b3. Protecting the pawn. So at some point this bishop will have to go back. Meow, that looks like a check. Guys, from this game, we have really lots to learn. So sometimes very strong players are doing very weird things. For example, now after this bishop check, I think bishop d2 is a typical move. And this is what Magnus is saying. And Mittens might just go back on e7. Okay, no, Mittens is taking. Never mind. And we take with the knight, with the idea that we want to push here e4, bishop g2. And now bishop... Yeah, this is already weird, no? Basically, Mittens went on a6, provoking the move b3, saying this will be a weakness. And now Mittens is back with the bishop on b7. Of course, Carson is going with the bishop on g2. And now Mittens will castle, of course. And I think we see also Carson castling. Or maybe not. Or maybe yes. There we go. Mittens knows a lot of theory. Beware. I mean, let's see. Let's see who is stronger. d6. Mittens played. The idea of d6 is probably to go with e5 or with c5. This is something that Mittens is doing. And now I play, well, Magnus plays queen c2 with the idea of going for e4. Honestly, I think Magnus has very good control over the center and uh, is doing really great. Okay, Magnus is taking on c5. Magnus really loves hand games. Mittens probably is just the latest stockfish or a lila zero variant. This is gonna be exciting. I believe that Mittens is just Magnus Carlsen. So that at some point, chess.com is gonna do the big move and reveal who is the actual identity of Mittens and is Magnus Carlsen. So I believe this game is gonna end in a draw. Mittens is taking with the pawn, always stake towards the center because pieces are stronger towards the center of the board. So this makes lots of sense. And now guys, Magnus is playing a big move. Magnus is going for the kill. And here we see the game is getting excited immediately from move 12. Knight on g5. Look at this. I already see this bishop is now hanging. And now maybe a knight could go on e4. Take here with check and give mate on h7. This game might turn in a very few time. And Mittens is going with the knight. Now what will Magnus... Oh my god. Can you guess the move that Magnus Carson is playing now in this position this move is insane it's a move that i would never play i can tell you magnus carson is giving away his bishop for the knight and that's super surprising because it feels like now this bishop is a god is like ultra strong and the idea is not visible why is magnus giving away that strong bishop it's blowing my mind honestly because i don't get the reason and now Magnus is playing rook d1, uh, looking at this open file. This is just insane. And now the knight is going back on e4, attacking this knight and this pawn. Okay, this is starting to make some sense, guys. Now Mittens is going back and this bishop is actually pretty much blocked. And maybe Magnus can also keep going with f3 and d4, meaning that this bishop will not really be so nice and well placed there. And Carson goes with the rook on e1. And maybe f3 and e4 is something that we're going to see. Now, f5 is a huge move attacking this knight and maybe preparing f4. Carson went with the knight back on c3. Holy moly, I'm really afraid of this move. But Mitten says no, it's too early for that and goes just with the queen on f6. Wow. Magnus is playing queen d3. Probably the idea is to play like f3, 4 or try to attack this pawn in some ways. 
And this guy is a huge positional game because there is not like, oh my god, oh my god, sorry guys, I had to stop this and I want you to try to find a big move that Magnus played in this position. And did it! Chooses the move! E4, this is a huge move. And you saw Mittens taking some time to think and then replying with the what? G6, just protecting this pawn one more time. This is insane. Now Magnus goes on with another huge move. Just taking space in the center. It's insane how both players are just preparing and improving their position and striking. And there we go, F4 is on the board. Oh my god. And now Mittens goes with the check and tries to exchange the queen against the world champion. And we know that the biggest strength of Magnus Carson are the end games. He is like a machine of the end games. And Magnus is playing. Oh my god, this move is insane. So Magnus could exchange the queen or move the king. But what he chooses is queen e3 because he doesn't want to place his king on the light square where this bishop could be potentially very strong and dangerous. And now Mittens, oh my god, Mittens is such a wild card. Just waiting one more time. What is this move even? What is a6? It's just waiting for what? This is insane. And now Magnus, with a king on g1, is doing a move that is one more time completely insane. Taking on f5, attacking this pawn, but this king is getting very, very much weak. And now this bishop on c6 is getting stronger and stronger. Wait, is Magnus winning a pawn? Queen takes, pawn takes. And then this pawn is hanging. Of course, the knight would be hanging, so Magnus needs to move the knight first. I'm so curious to see where Magnus is going to move the knight. And if that is even forced to. Uh, what could be a move? Knight e2 is a move, knight b1 is a move, knight a4 is a move. And I don't see other squares. Okay, guys, let's go for it. Let's see what is going to happen. And there we go. The cat is saying, the light that burns twice, as bright burns half as long. <laughs> you are not long for this game. Oh my god, this is like an horror film to play this cat. Knocks queen onto the floor, your queen is gone. <laughs> Honestly, this is very evil. <laughs> and uh, Magnus is going with the knight just all the way back to b1. Um, now this pawn is hanging. Oh my god, guys, try to find the move that Magnus Carson is making here. It's insane. Don't tell me knight of one is knight of one. Oh my god, how do you protect this pawn? Yes, Mittens needs to play e5, but this is losing a pawn, right? Uh, let's go back shortly. After knight of one, sorry. After knight of one, this pawn on d4 is hanging and there is no way to protect it. The only way is e5. But after e5, you just take, pawn takes, and now this pawn is just falling and Magnus is taking just immediately. And now Magnus is actually having an extra pawn. Mittens is bringing the rook to d8, protecting the weak pawn on d4, which is also past pawn. Now I think we will see how Magnus is bringing this knight back. Guys, try to find the move that Magnus is playing here. It's knight c3! Indeed, this knight cannot be taken because rook takes. And this is huge, the knight is getting activated. Mittens is bringing the rook to d7, uh, controlling the d file. And now maybe knight here could be a move. And yes, this is what Magnus is playing. Knight here attacking this pawn. The more you push this pawn, the more this pawn becomes weak. And now we go with bishop f3. This move looks really smart. The bishop is pinning the knight. But maybe king f2 can be played. I'm again flabbergasted. This game is insane. But it shows a huge move. Magnus is playing knight d2. With the idea that after bishop take, Magnus is taking back with the rook. And then this pawn is really going weak because the knight goes on f3 and this pawn is gonna be hanging. That's insane. Magnus is a very practical chess player. This is a threat and he needs to solve it. Look at this pin, it's very annoying, and now the threat is of e3. And that's why Magnus is playing the move rook to e1. What is Mintens going to play here? Knight on the side of the board, but this has a sense. Mintens wants to go with f4, something like this. Guys, the evaluation bar says that Mittens is in trouble. Mittens is in trouble now, needs to play very good moves in order to survive Magnus' course in age of 30. So we go with the knight back here. Uh, Magnus wants to try to block the pawn, and I find this move another brilliant move. Mostly, when your opponent has a pass pawn, there is a very important rule that is 
place a knight in front of your own pawn because the knights are very good blocking pieces and imagine a knight on d3 still very active controlling very important squares and on the other side is completely blocking the pawn so it's a very good move a very good idea to place the knight in front of the opponent pass of your opponent's pass pawn what is Mittens playing? Mittens then is playing the move d3, which means that this pawn is gonna be really weak. And now, yeah, this is the sneaky move that Magnus is playing, just king g2 with the idea of h3, and that bishop would be completely trapped. That's why Mittens is just going with the knight away. Oh my god, this is a hell of a match. This is like the big match of the year. Magnus is just attacking this bishop and saying, you gotta run. And Mittens is ignoring all the way, going with the knight. Oh my god, on e4, counterattacking the knight there. And now, the big move that Magnus Carson is playing. <laughs> is an exchange sacrifice. Rook takes. Bing, boom, bang. And now, what is Mittens going to play? Mittens is taking Yahweh yeah, check. But uh, this means that Magnus is going to have two pieces for the rook i'm not sure if he can capture with the knight because then this move is happening magnus took with the rook makes lots of sense now we have two knights versus a rook what is stronger maybe if the king gets here sneaky on d3 this pawn is falling one day and that might be very problematic but let's see this is gonna be a very fun end game yeah, there is a fork, potentially fork on e5, but both players are just bringing the king, and I love to see that. Yeah, Mittens is now pushing this pawn. I think this move is not a good sign because Mittens cannot really improve the position more. Instead, Magnus is slowly bringing the king, which is a very important rule in the endgame. Just bring your own king because the king becomes a very important piece, and now I think king e3 is gonna happen too. Okay, we have a prophylactic move by Magnus, that is the move a3 probably preparing b4 i mean mittens just waited with the king which is not a good sign right mittens doesn't know what to play it's just waiting for magnus to improve the position and magnus is creating a pass pawn and now mittens says you have triumphed existing for longer than many before you <laughs> Meow. why is this cat always saying <laughs> Meow. i don't get it i think like magnus is taking here just easy clap yes and there we have a check, guys. I think the king is just hiding on e3. It's a very beautiful square for the king. And this is what Magnus is playing. And now with two pass pawn like this, I think this is not looking any good for Mittens the cat. Pushing the pawn is just an amazing move. Magnus can slowly start to push them all. And then we might just see a resignation. Now, I like the move king h7 because the pawn on g3 is under attack. So maybe the king needs to go back. And then maybe you give check. Maybe it's gonna be a draw. And then the prophecy is revealed. I think then uh, it's clear that Mittens is actually Magnus Carson. But Mittens is a Giga Chad. They don't want to repeat moves. And they give this check. And now Magnus is covering with the rook. Because if not, you would lose the pawn on g3, of course. And after rook takes, pawn takes. What is Mittens going to play? Going with the king on g6. And now we just have two knights against the rook, guys. How is this handgame? Who will win this handgame? Magnus is saying, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna push all my pawns and I'm gonna promote. And Mittens instead is bringing the king, attacking this pawn and saying, I'm gonna promote this one. Magnus is taking the final pawn of Mittens on the center. Now there is just one pawn remaining. This knight is also protecting the pawn on f4. And Mittens is pushing all the way up. And Magnus is just ignoring, saying, I don't care. I'm gonna bring this knight and stop your pawn. Mittens keeps going with the pawn. And now, I think knight of three is a move that we see. And there we go. The knight is stopping the pawn. And the problem, guys, is that now those two pawns are gonna be unstoppable. Which one to push first? This is a very complicated moment. Magnus is not pushing any pawn. Because anytime you push a pawn, the square around are gonna be weak. For example, if c6 is pushed, probably the king can penetrate and block the pawns for real. And then it's gonna be a draw, or maybe even white is losing. But I think like in this position, white is no longer losing. Magnus is waiting. He's improving the position one more time, bringing the king to face the other king. Mittas is going backwards. Now I think Magnus Carson might follow, actually not. We have a check, guys. A check with the knight. Checking the king. And Mitton says, I'm a tiger. And you are in the jungle. I call eternity. <laughs>
And now, are we going to see this pawn be pushed? Because this pawn is now free to go. And Magnus is pushing the pawn. I think Mittens is in huge trouble. Mittens is trying to promote his own pawn. But how are you going to stop the pawn on f7? Knight g6. And now Mittens is sending his pawn. I think knight takes is gonna happen. Rook takes is gonna happen. And then there are two many pawns but what is the most precise way oh my god i see it guys i see it i see it pawn to f7 mittens is giving a check oh my god this pawn is about to promote guys and magnus is going here now there is one check remaining and mittens is not giving mittens is going all the way down but now after knight g6 i don't see a way to stop this king to f6 this king is going to g7 and the pawn is about to be promoted Rook d8 played by Mittens, and now King here seems like the oh, winning yeah. move. Magnus is playing knight g6, wanting to support the pawn to promote. Magnus is going to promote sooner or later. And here we have a queen on the board. After this check, the king is going there. King is three. And now I will promote this move. I think like Magnus Carson completely defeated our kitten. Magnus is pushing. The kitten is moving. He's trying to go for a stalemate, but the pawns are unstoppable. Are we going to see a checkmate with the knight? Oh my god, Magnus is a huge troll. Magnus is the biggest troll. Magnus is giving check. Attention, guys. Magnus is giving check. And check with the pawn. I think we're gonna see mate with the queen, actually. We're gonna see mate with the queen. Magnus is not a huge troll. Craft single square chip. Exchange. And there we go! Magnus Carson defeated the cat that made all the internet cry in tears. Destroyed everybody. And now the cat is saying, What? How? You chi? You chi? I mean, meow. <laughs> oh my god, this cat is accusing Magnus Carson of cheating. I think that this is gonna be a huge new drama on the chess scenes. Mittens the cat accusing somebody of cheating. This is gonna be a huge new drama. Stay tuned for more. Subscribe! Subscribe to YouTube, subscribe to Twitch, subscribe to everything. Bye.